Welcome to Times of Refreshing. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we begin this broadcast today in your name. Bless every hearer and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Today, I want to share with you on the topic I have captioned, So Into Your Marriage. By way of introduction, sowing and reaping are universal laws of nature. The Bible tells us in Galatians 6, 7, Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This law applies also to marriage relationship. But sadly, too many people enter into marriage without a good understanding of this. For this reason, there are many people today with broken relationships carrying emotional baggage that should have been avoided. I pray that you will not be one of such. The social media is filled with news of split marriages, threatened divorce, sour marital experiences, and even couples who have lived together for as long as over 30 years are not even spared from this negativity. Understand clearly, dear listener, that marriage is good and is ordained for your success. But one vital key to enjoy the good in marriage is to sow good seeds into it. When you fully understand the law of sowing and reaping, you will begin to see how every little decision and action affects your marriage, both now and in the future. What kind of seeds, you may ask, should I sow into my marriage? I will share with you briefly today some of those seeds. The first kind of seed is spiritual seed. He that sweareth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8, the Bible tells us, spiritual seeds are the most valuable and profitable to sow into your marriage. And you begin to sow this seed before you even get married. So whether you are single or married today, this subject applies to you. You know, the spiritual controls the physical. The more fortified you are spiritually, the more victories you win maritally. It's a law. Spiritual seeds include, but are not limited to, one, prayer, two, the word of God, Three, your own thoughts. And four, your own words. Talking about prayer, when last did you pray for your spouse, your children, your marriage, if you are married? If you are single, when last did you pray concerning your marital destiny? This is one of the benefits and blessings that God opened my eyes to ever before I got married. Before I ever met my husband, God helped me. I had a group of people, young girls like me. We were in prayers together. And one of the things we used to pray about then was about our marital destiny. What a joy. See what the Lord has done today. He will do greater things in your life in Jesus' name. Everything is not prayer. Somebody might say, yes, but all things function well with prayer. Use prayer, therefore, as a weapon of warfare rather than argument. You can pray for God to keep strengthening the bond in your marriage, if you are married, to ward off every negativity from it. Prayer definitely changes things and it changes people. You don't only ask for things in prayer. You fortify and take charge of your marriage in prayer. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. The book of Psalms, chapter 37 and verse 5 tells us, By the grace of God, I make time, as much as God helps me, to pray concerning my marriage. I pray for my children, my grandchildren, and people who live under my roof, as much as God gives me the opportunity. You can do the same thing. Remember, we serve a prayer answering God. Number two, the word of God. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Colossians 3.16 tells us, Marriage is founded 
on and sustained by the word of God. Hebrews 11, 3, God opposes all things, including marriage, by the word of his power. So, make time to search the scriptures. Locate scriptures regarding the goodness of marriage. For instance, marriage is honorable, Hebrews 13, 4 tells us. For instance, Proverbs 18, 22 tells us, whosoever finds a wife finds a good thing. So, make time to locate such scriptures concerning a good marriage. And then, of course, after locating those scriptures, don't stop there. Meditate on them. Digest the scriptures that you have located. And don't stop there. Go ahead and put your faith in those scriptures. Believe in those scriptures. Believe in the genuineness and that God is always true to his word. For instance, ever before we got married, my husband, located seven concepts of marriage. And this concept has been the bedrock of our own marriage and has been a blessing to so many people all over the world today. For instance, one of those concepts is the fact that marriage is good. And it is designed for man's good. And what a joy we are beneficiaries of the goodness that is in marriage. You also will share a brighter testimony. How about your thoughts? This is also very important. Proverbs 23, 7 tells us, As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Good spiritual seeds involve the seed of the thoughts of your heart. Think good about your marriage. Think good about your spouse. Think good about your children. Think of great future for your marriage and your home and your family. If God were to open the thoughts of some individuals and let their spouse see what goes on there, it will be amazing. Dear listener, don't let the negatives around affect your thinking about your marriage. Let your thoughts be ruled by the word of God. Be positive in your thoughts. Prevailing circumstances notwithstanding, and God will bring it to come to pass. And of course, your words also become very important. Proverbs 18.21 makes it clear. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Your words are seeds. Hear me clearly. Your words are seeds. Therefore, you must learn to sow them carefully because you will soon sit down to a banquet of the consequences of your words. Therefore, Learn to speak edifying words, loving and soothing words concerning your family members. The Bible states very clearly that soft words will drive away strife. Proverbs 15, 1. You want to live in peace? Choose your words carefully. Speak positively about your spouse, especially in their absence and in front of your children. If you sow careless, rude, or angry words, you will harvest sin. But if you take care to sow words of love, encouragement, and generosity, you will reap a harvest of blessings. I pray that this will be your own experience in Jesus' name. There are individuals that speak so well of other people, but when it comes to their own spouse or children, they speak down on them. They bring them down. These are all seeds. And whatever you sow, you will reap. Please be careful the kind of what seeds that you are sowing. Second type of seed is practical seeds. Let us do good unto all men. Galatians 6.10 says, Practical seeds consist of your actions in marriage. This includes kindness, character, and monetary. Action, they say, speaks louder than voice. What is kindness? Kindness simply means being thoughtful, compassionate, benevolent, and human. Positive and kind actions are a major reason why people connect and decide to get married. In the Bible, one of the reasons Rebecca was chosen for Isaac 
was because of her kind nature. Read that in Genesis 24. So, if your kind attitude was one of the green lights that led to your marriage decision, it should continue much more in marriage. The little everyday things you do for your spouse, let him or her know that you are thinking about them and the relationship. For instance, giving him or her a cup of water when needed, helping him or her to keep the shoes in the right place, helping him or her to lock the door. All of these little things, they are very important. You are sowing a seed with every deed. Don't be rude, arrogant, proud. No. Show compassion, romance, offer genuine friendship. These are the things that count. Be a helper indeed. Sarah in the Bible, Esther, Ruth, and the list goes on. We're all true helpers. No wonder their marital success story. You shall succeed. Nothing says, for example, I care about you like a spontaneous act of kindness. Begin to do that today. Start doing random acts of care for your spouse today. And in no time, you'll be doing them out of habit. That will be a lot of blessing to your marriage. How about character? This is the mental and moral qualities distinct to a person. Your character is your charisma, personality, and so on. Good character boosts marriage relationship. Esther's good character, for instance, in the Bible, made her queen in a foreign land and gave her audience before the king. Even in difficult times, Esther chapter 5 verse 1. How about Ruth? Her good character, especially towards Naomi, her mother-in-law, attracted her to Boaz. How is your character to your in-law? Remember, Nabal was seen as foolish because of his character. 1 Samuel 25. How is your character? Micah's character in the Bible towards David also led to her barrenness. 2 Samuel chapter 6. Therefore, listener, don't let any negative character affect the success of your marriage. Are you always aggressive, angry, moody, temperamental? This negatively affects marital relationship. Sarah in the Bible obeyed Abraham and he responded through the love showered on her. Husband and wife treat each other with love and respect. Woman, the respect you don't give to your husband at home, you give much more to your boss at work. That is not right. Your spouse will better understand how you feel about him or her when you show it more than when you say it. So don't stop at saying it, begin to show it. And of course, monetary. This is also very important. Money is a seed and it's a practical way to sow seeds into your marriage. It's a vital seed to sow into your marriage. It's a known fact that one of the leading causes of tension in some marriages today is finance. Don't be deceived. Listen carefully. Your spouse and children will not eat or wear promises. And I like men and husbands and fathers to hear this very well. They will not wear big dreams. So you must be willing to sow monetary seeds. Though financial provision is not limited to a specific gender, the man, however, should take responsibility as a man to provide for his home. Some men leave their homes without adequate financial provision and they take care of themselves outside and they do that for others. That is unscriptural. It's your responsibility to set aside some amount according to the blessing of God upon your life. 
from whatever you earn for the financial needs of your home. And as you do that, you are fulfilling scriptures and the God of heaven will ensure you enjoy more of his blessings. Every relationship, of course, understand, listener, is a balance of give and take. Therefore, don't expect to take if you are not ready to give. However, do this according to your level per time. My husband says, and I believe this is very true, life is in phases and men are in sizes. So live according to the face-by-face -face lifting of God upon your life per time. And as God blesses you, the more you are able to make more available to the members of your family. The third kind of seed is the seed of time. And this is very, very important. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. According to the Office for National Statistics, couples on average spend about two to two and a half hours a day together. And that includes weekends. Listen to this. Out of these two to two and a half hours, one third of that time is said to be spent watching television, 30 minutes out of it eating, and 24 minutes out of it doing housework together. Look at that. Compared to the regular 24 hours in a day, this is not a lot of time. And what it's used for is not valuable enough to strengthen any serious marital relationship. Listener, your time is one of the most precious gifts you can give to your spouse. Spending quality time with each other daily is a secret ingredient to making your marriage last a lifetime. This is very, very critical. It is the best way to ensure your relationship stays healthy and strong. Think of activities that both of you can enjoy together to bring happiness, laughter, and fun. Sowing seeds of time into your marriage require flexibility, patience, and a whole lot of creativity. Are you available? There are many people today who are married. They are not available for each other. No matter how busy your schedule is, make time to call, send text messages, chats, emails during your busy work schedule to your spouse. The more quality time you spend with each other, the fonder you get. It's not just the amount of time you spend together, but the quality of your interactions that really counts. Research shows that the longest married couples held up their shared memories as a chief factor in their relationships. Health and memories which require some time. To give more time to your spouse, I will advise you to look at the things that take up your time and see how you can create more time for your relationship. As you do this, you will discover your relationship will begin to grow stronger by the day. However, time should be spent meaningfully and mindfully so your relationship bonds can grow stronger. Dear listener, whether you are married or single, in conclusion, remember, marriage is a garden. We reap what we sow. And ignorance doesn't stop our seeds from producing after its kind. Sowing good seeds into your marriage is a choice, and you can make that choice right now. Consciously and deliberately, whether you are single or married, begin to sow spiritual, one, two, practical, and three, time seeds into your marriage, and your harvest shall be guaranteed and there for all to see. I pray for you today, whether you are single or married, 
have one listening to this broadcast that as you begin to sow good seeds into your marriage, the God of heaven will make your marital destiny to come out in flying colors and your testimony shall be great in Jesus' mighty name. And in case you are challenged in any area, I pray today that the God of heaven will step in supernaturally and turn every challenge in your marriage into testimony as you obey the things you have heard in this broadcast. Dear listener, are you born again? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you haven't, do it right now. Bow your heads and pray this prayer with me. Say after me, Oh God, today I come to you. Jesus, save me. I will live for you from today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that salvation prayer, congratulations. Now you are born again. Please log on to the website address at the bottom of your screen right now. Fill the salvation form. And you can also send your testimonies through the same addresses. And of course, always remember, God is too faithful to fail. Bye.